Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get the best streaming settings using Stream Elements OBS.Live. Now I'm going to be showing you the settings that are going to be for bad computers and good computers. So I'm going to cover all aspect ratios and give you examples of what the settings are specifically for, like i3s or risens, you know, stuff like that. First, I want to give a quick shout out to Savio JV and Reju the Killer. They commented first on a previous couple of vids of mine. And so go check out their channels. They're pretty awesome. Well, let's dig deep into it. So if you have stream elements installed already, then we're going to load that up. If you don't, you can download it with a link in the description. So once you have stream elements loaded up, you're going to go to your settings button, which you can either go to file settings or you can find settings in your controls. Once you're in here, the first thing you want to change is video. Go down to video and what you're going to keep your base canvas resolution, you're going to keep that at whatever the resolution your game is. So if you have a 4K monitor or a 2K monitor, you're going to put that base canvas to 2K or 4K. But for most people on this planet, they just have 1080p, so we're going to keep that at 1920 by 1080 Now output scaled resolution is something you want to change uh, depending on your streaming hardware. So let's just say you have a pretty bad computer like an i3 or something along those lines or an i5, something old, like the 4400s, 6600s, something aged like that, you're going to want to downscale this. And by downscale, basically that means it's going to take your stream and just shrink it to fit a 720p area. So we want to downscale it to 720p, which is 1280 by 720. This basically makes your stream a lot smaller when it uploads to Twitch or YouTube or Mixer, and it allows your viewers to watch your stream a lot easier without any kind of buffering, lag, or skipping. You're still going to game in 1080p, 4K, 2K, whatever it is, but your viewers are just going to watch in 720p at the full resolution that you are gaming in. So that's a good thing to have when you have a weak computer or an old computer or if you have a slow internet connection. Downscale filter, this basically means how sharp it's going to downscale. By linear means it's going to be a little bit blurry. So if you have a bad computer like an i3 or an i5 or an old i7, you want to go with by linear. You can do bicubic, that's kind of a medium grade one, so if you don't know if your computer is bad or good, stick with bicubic. Langzos, if you have a really good computer, like an i9, or an 8th Gen i7, or a Risen 2600, something along those lines, you can do Langzos. FPS value, there's three things you can do here. 30 is the FPS by default. It provides a pretty decent quality stream, but you can change this to 60 if you have good internet. If you don't have good internet and you change this to 60, you're going to be experiencing a lot of dropped frames. And nobody wants to see dropped frames because that makes a stream look terrible. So a good compromise if you have okay internet and maybe like an okay computer, you can do 48 frames per second because that provides a better looking stream than 30 and it doesn't have to use all the power 60 does. So again, if you have like a i3 or i5, you want to do 30 or 48 FPS. If you have a newer computer, like a Risen or i9, then you're going to do 48 to 60, depending on your internet. So we're going to go ahead and say we got 60, then we're going to hit apply. Next thing you want to go to is your output tab. Now in here, go up to output mode, make sure it's on advanced. That's going to open up a lot more options down here. So let's go over the encoders real fast. These are the couple encoders I have. I have a GTX 1060 graphics card, and when you have a GTX or an NVIDIA graphics card, you're going to see NVIDIA encoding options. If you have an AMD graphics card, like the Vega 64 or something like that, you're going to see AMD encoding options. And then everybody is always going to be seeing the X264. What that means, X264 is means it's just going to be encoding using your processor. And if you have any other options right here, that means it's going to be encoding using some sort of graphics card or GPU. Laptops have built-in GPUs, so you may see like QuickSync or Intel, something like that. Now, you can use any one of these. They each have their pros and cons. If you have a pretty good graphics card, like a RTX 2080 or something like that, then you can use the NVIDIA's NVENC encoders, and it's going to be converting your footage to a stream and uploading it all using the graphics card's power. But you're also going to be gaming on that graphics card at the same time. So you're not going to be using any CPU or very little CPU, but you're going to be using a ton of your graphics card. So if you don't have a really good graphics card, you don't want to stream with NVIDIA's NVENC because it's going to put a lot of strain on your graphics card and you'll have to lower your game's graphics to play. You're going to experience choppy, you know, almost unplayable gameplay if you're trying to stream in high quality 
and you're trying to game at high quality with not a good graphics card. So usually the best bet you want to do is x264 and that's what most people should do. If you have a pretty decent processor then x264 is the way to go. I have a Ryzen 1800X so it's more than enough to convert a stream and upload it. So we're going to choose x264 and then we don't want to rescale output. In my last video I had this checked but you actually don't need it checked so make sure that isn't checked right here and then once you go down to rate control you have a few options. You have CBR, ABR, VBR, and CRF. CBR stands for constant bitrate. You're going to tell it a number and it's going to do its best to stay right at that number. That's the one I use. It works the best because it doesn't really fluctuate that much at all. ABR is average bitrate. That's basically like if you tell it a number, it's going to do its best to keep it right at that number. But it has a little more fluctuation room to stream depending on your internet or what goes on in your game. VBR is very similar to ABR. It's called variable bitrate. And what it is is you tell it a bitrate and it does its best to stay at that bitrate. But it can fluctuate even more than the ABR. So depending on what goes on in your game, it could drop the bitrate down to something really low depending on your internet or what goes on in the game or keep it right at that number you told it to. And the fourth thing is CRF, which is constant rate factor. That uses kind of a different rate control. You actually tell it a number and that's basically a quality number. The lower the number you go, that means it's the higher the quality. The higher the number you go, the lower the quality. So if I'm ever using CRF, it's to record and it's not to stream because it converts that quality number to a very high bit rate. So if you're streaming using CRF, yeah, your stream may look great, but it's pumping it out at such a high bit rate that nobody can actually watch that unless you have transcoding, which means if somebody's on your stream, they can choose the quality to drop it down from 1080 to 720 or 480. Let's go to CBR. We're gonna choose that one, and then let's go to these bit rates right here. So for bit rates, there's kind of a range you wanna stay at. Anything below 2500, which is 2.5 megabits per second, you're gonna get some real blockiness. And so usually for really low end internet, like 10 megabit or 20 megabit, then you're gonna have to keep it at a real low number or else you're not gonna be able to stream properly. You're gonna drop frames and people are gonna see lagginess in your stream and nobody wants to watch that. So if you have really decent internet, like 50 megabit or 100 megabit or even gigabit internet, then you wanna start moving your bit rate up. A minimum bit rate you wanna go is probably 2500. An average bit rate you want to go for a good looking stream, the one I personally use, which is 4500. And if you want to go really above and beyond for a really pristine stream, then you could do around maybe like 7000 or 7500. But again, the higher number you go, the harder it is for people to be watching your stream if you do not have transcoding. Use custom buffer size, you don't need to check that. Keyframe interval, this is almost like a little quality number. So zero means auto, and what that means, it's just gonna be fluctuating between one, two, and three. One means high quality, high frame rate action going on on your computer. Two means kind of lower action, less movement going on on your computer. Three means you're gonna be having like almost no movement on your computer, like maybe like you're playing chess or something. So a good number to have it at is either one or two, and you could set that manually. CPU usage preset. Now this one confuses a lot of people, but basically the higher it is on this list, like ultra fast and super fast, that means it's gonna use less power to encode. And the lower you go down on this list, a faster, fast, medium, slow, slower, the lower you go down, that means it's gonna be using more power, either graphics card or CPU, to encode your stream and upload it. In a way, it's a quality measurement. So let's just say if you have an i3 or an i5 or an old i7, you wanna to stick to ultra fast, super fast, or very fast. Maybe even you can get lucky and get faster, but you just wanna to stick to the top three or four. If you have a newer i7 or a good Ryzen processor like a 2600, 1800X, or something even the 3000s up there, then you could go down to fast, medium, and slow. But be careful, you may think you have a really good processor and you maybe hit medium or slow, then you're actually gonna be experiencing lots of issues on your stream. So basically the best way to do it is just test it out. These aren't perfect settings for every single computer because there's so many computers out there. Profile, right here, you have a few options, baseline, main, or high. Baseline, nobody really uses that. Main, that means if people are watching your stream on the phones and things like that, it's gonna look a little bit better. High, if they're watching it on computers, it's gonna look a little bit better. That's, you know, you really can't tell a difference, so you don't even need to choose any of these if you don't want to, but I personally use high, and it, my streams look pretty good. Tune, you don't gotta worry about any of these either. These are kind of specialty things. I personally keep mine at none, and my streams look great. And here's something down here that it works for me, but it doesn't necessarily work for everybody else. But if you type OpenCL equals true right here, then basically what that means is if you're streaming with your processor, 
X264, it's gonna use some of the power from your graphics card, like the extra power that you're not using, to help encode the stream. Again, it works for me. I've used it and my streams look great. And so if you wanna give it a shot, you can too. And then you're all good to go. That is gonna get you the best settings for weak or strong computers. You get to decide because you get to test because you now know what everything does. If you have any questions, Shoot me a comment. I'll do my best to answer. I'm getting a lot of comments from my other videos on my OBS videos, so it's kind of hard to answer them all, but I still do my best. Don't forget to download Stream Elements in the description below. It's totally free and awesome. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Just a heads up, these are my current patrons. They all support me for a dollar a month. It's very cheap, and you can too. And don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell notification next to the subscribe button because that notifies you whenever I pump out a new video. And if you're the first person to comment on the video, you get a special shout out in my next video. So thanks again for watching.